बुला रहे हैं जो कि थोड़ी देर बाद आपको भी जिनके जवाब देने पड़ेंगे बट बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक यू सो मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड गिविंग अस दैट इनसाइट इनटू द वेरियस हार्मफुल नेमेटोड्स दैट आर प्रेवलेंट इन आवर कंट्री नाउ लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर फॉर दिस इवनिंग अनदर वेरी वेरी प्रोमिनेंट पर्सनालिटी उनका नाम है डॉक्टर आर वे आर के वालिया और वो हमें बताएंगे नेमेटोड मैनेजमेंट प्रैक्टिसेस के बारे में इनफैक्ट उनसे पहले मैं इनवाइट करना चाहूंगा डॉक्टर रिचर्ड सिकोरा को जो कि हमें ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं भारत से नहीं बल्कि बाहर से सो आई एम टोल दैट वी आल्सो हैव डॉक्टर रिचर्ड सिकोरा डॉक्टर रिचर्ड इफ यू कुड जस्ट स्विच ऑन योर वीडियो फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ ऑल आवर व्यूअर्स राइट नाउ डॉक्टर रिचर्ड सिकोरा हेडेड नेमेटोलॉजी एंड सॉइल इको सिस्टम एट द इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर I cannot really get this name right because I, it sounds like a German institute, doctor. You'll have to tell us which institute no, this Hindi. is. It's in Hindi. Sorry. <laughs> it's in Hindi. It's in Hindi. <laughs> My Hindi is all over the place. It seems clearly. Well, it's a part of the University of Bonn, Germany, from 1971 until retirement in the year 2008. He has worked in subtropical and tropical nematology on a global scale for a broad array of international research and development organizations. at the university of bonn he trained over 90 phd students in nematology with many coming from or working in the tropics and subtropics he has published over 300 research papers numerous book chapters and has edited and co-edited a number of scientific books and proceedings he received the university of ghent belgium van den brand award for science the award of merit of the university of illinois and the international service award of the american phytopathological society for his various contributions i can just go on reading about you and it will be never ending you have achieved so much you have been the mentor for over 90 phd students absolutely incredible thank you so much doctor for joining us it's a matter of absolute pleasure for all of us over here to have insights and experience coming in from somebody as seasoned as you doctor dr richard so what do i have to do now share my screen yes sir it shared perfect you're good to go doctor uh presentation mode okay can you see it yeah yeah we can see it okay well namaste good afternoon good day and guten tag for the german colleagues who may be listening um i'm very thankful to be asked to talk at this meeting Uh, I want to thank the organizers. I want to thank my colleagues in India who may have re recommended my my name, and to Bayer for the support they have uh, added to nematology over the years. Um, I want to state that my talk is about nematode rhizosphere plant interactions. This is a very complex topic, and I always say it's a battle between the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'll go into detail. I'm very glad that Dr. Khan gave an overview of all the problems that nematodes cause, so I don't have to go into that. I'm going to go into these interactions that are important for plant growth, plant health, and basically root health. Uh, most of you probably don't know this, but I started my career whoop, in Pantnagar. I did a postdoc in 1970 in Pantnagar, and from there I went to Germany, where I've been for all these years working with my students. So, with that said, the rhizosphere and plant nematode interactions is very complex. I have a tendency to talk very fast as I get to move on. So, if I talk too fast, somebody, please, Ravi, please slow me down. Um, Absolutely, doctor. Don't worry, okay. you're going at a good pace. Okay, but I I finished this talk in 13 minutes before, and I'm supposed to talk a half an hour. So I'll try <laughs> to slow down. Um, I want to give you a better understanding of this hidden enemy and what it does to the root system. I'm a soil ecologist, nematologist, pathologist, and I'm interested in the rhizosphere. I'm interested in what happens in that particular area of the soil. For me, it's the center of the universe. And I always talk about the good and bad and the ugly because I think this is important in showing farmers what's happening in the soil. You have good nematodes, you have bad nematodes, and you have what we call ugly nematodes. So we have these good, bad, and ugly 
animals in the soil feeding on the root system, but we also have good, bad, and ugly microorganisms that are in the soil and interacting with the nematodes. So we're talking about complexity. Now the rhizosphere is the soil that's along the root system. It's a very thin layer. It may only be one millimeter. And this rhizosphere is where all the biological and chemical features of the soil are influenced by the roots. So you have root exudates moving out, you have nutrients moving in, and you have a large number of things happening in this very small area surrounding the root surface. The rhizosphere is not the entire soil that's con con that where the soil where the roots go through. It's just that surface area. It influences hatch of nematodes. It inf I can't get rid of this thing here. I don't like that. That doesn't matter. It influences hatch, germinations of spores, it has hatching of nematode eggs, the attraction of the nematode to the root, the recognition and penetration occurs right on the root surface, that means right in the rhizosphere. So it's a very important area of plant health and root health. Now, the pathosome is something I developed many years ago, probably by someone, probably someone else had it even before me. But the pathosome is this cone of soil that extends in all directions from the base of the plant. Uh, when you plant a seed or a seedling, it may only be half a liter of soil and maybe a liter of soil if you put a seedling in, but it's the cone of soil surrounding that young growing root system. And it harbors the rhizosphere and it harbors bulk soil. And for me, it's the center of the universe for plant root systems and for plant root health and in the end for yield. So it's a very important area, the pathosome, and you have to protect the seedling in this small amount of soil from early root infection. And if you can protect that seedling in that early root infection phase in this pathosome, you can increase yield. Now, there are numerous nematode plant rhizosphere interactions. Dr. Kahn did an excellent job of showing you all of the different problems existing in in India. I won't go into detail on this. He did a perfect job. But we do have these ectoparasites. These are not so bad. They do transmit uh, viruses. They can affect the root tip. We then have nematodes that move into the root system, as Dr. Khan said. These nematodes are found in rice, the picture below, but they're also found in maize. They're found in wheat. They're found in all crops, basically. And they cause lesions in the cortex. And these lesions are then colonized by weak or heavily pathogenic fungi, even bacteria, and they cause root necrosis. Very difficult to control, and it's, they pretend, penetrate the plant throughout the season, which makes it even more difficult. And then we have, of course, the root knot nematode mentioned by Dr. Khan uh, and cyst nematodes that produce these giant cells you see here at the bottom. Uh, and those are, the th those are the cells that prevent nutrient uptake and block water uptake. And this is a very important uh, effect. I mentioned the bad. By bad, I mean nematodes that cause severe damage but are manageable. That means we have resistance. We may have a nematicide that we can use. We can use rotations. We can use a number of different types of techniques, integrated nematode management, to keep the populations down. On the upper left, you see something we have in Germany and Europe right now. It's a stem nematode that attacks sugar beet. It also attacks onions and broad bean, and it causes severe rotting of the tuber, severe rotting. It penetrates the plant in the first four days after germination. We have cyst nematodes we cannot control on potato in Germany or in Europe because we do not have resistance and nematicides are not even allowed in Germany. So the, 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 the complexity of controlling nematodes in Europe is extremely difficult. We have nematodes on the bottom left. These are uh, root knot nematodes and Praetolinchus nematodes, lesion nematodes that attack the peanut shell. And what Dr. Khan didn't mention in his talk, they also increase the aflatoxins that you have in the peanut. And the aflatoxin damage is extremely difficult, extremely bad for human health. Child in Africa, their children are stunted drastically because of aflatoxins in the food chain. We have the root knot nematodes, which on some crops can be controlled manageable, but on others not, especially when you have high intensity vegetable production every year. And then we have virus vectors on the bottom right that transmit viruses to a number of plants, which are also very difficult to control. And then we have what I call ugly. The ugly ones are the ones that can be controlled with 
with certain chemicals, but we have no resistance. We have no resistance to the lesion nematodes on rice. We have no resistance to the ectoparasites. This is the upper left picture where you see forking of the root system. So this is a celery. It happens in red beet. It happens in uh, potato, not potato. Yeah, potato also, but also in carrots. And this forking makes these crops unmarketable in Europe. And it does the same probably in, 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 uh, in India. You have to have a beet on the left, which is healthy. And any forking is a problem. Ectoparasites are very difficult to control right now in Europe. And there's a number of different ones. We also have the banana toppling disease. It was mentioned by Dr. Khan on banana. This is a worldwide problem. It is one of the biggest markets for, for nematicides in the world because these plants have to be treated three to four times a year to prevent that toppling. And this is a, a major problem for banana growers worldwide. And in the middle, you see a root knot nematode on potato. It's called Chitwoodia in Europe. It's called Meloidaguna incognita in the United States. And it gets into the root tuber and it cannot be controlled once it's in there. And if you don't control it, you cannot sell the potato chips. You cannot sell the French fries because when you fry those potato tubers, they turn black. The, the small nematodes inside, it almost looks like it's peppered, salt and peppered potato chips. Now, very important for yield is root architecture. And you need a healthy root to produce high yields. So we have to have a healthy root system. And this is occurs to have a healthy root system. We have to be able to control pests, diseases, especially nematodes in that pathosome right after planting in the first four or five weeks after plant growth. After that, the net plant is normally resilient or tolerant to any yield loss. But those first five weeks are drastic, They're very important. To give you some feeling for this, this is the impact of irrigation on root growth. On the left is the ideal situation. You see what happens under saturation in the middle on the left. Then you see a lack of moisture and light watering. Lack of moisture and light watering can be, that type of root system can be caused by nematode infection. And if you have areas in Afri Africa or in India where you have semi-arid conditions, nematode infection will affect that very small weak root system drastically, prevent water uptake and reduce yield significantly. So this is the, this is this root architecture is more important than most people believe. Just to give you an idea, these are nematodes, different nematodes on the outside that cause stunting of the root system. They deform basically root architecture. It leads to an unhealthy plant and it leads, leads to massive yield loss. And if you have drought conditions or lack of minerals, lack of fertilizer, it can cause severe damage. On the far right is a, a, a cyst nematode that affects wheat. Uh, in the middle is rhizoctonia and take all and a healthy plant. Important are the two smallest root systems because these two organisms interact in the soil. When you have nematodes in the soil, they increase rhizoctonia damage. This decreases the root architecture function and increases yield loss. So root architecture is something we should think about and you can improve root architecture by protecting that root seedling in that pathosome. Now I like with my students, I usually talk about the edge of chaos. In the soil, in that pathosome, in any soil, you have a nematode multitrophic interaction. You have a dynamic system of a major, major number of different types of organisms. You can see the numbers on the bottom of the, of the uh, in the table at the bottom. We're talking about billions and billions, trillions of bacteria in 30 centimeters of soil in a square meter. We're talking about a million fungi or more. We're talking about protozoans, nematodes, mites. All of these things can interact in the soil. And this is very important because these interactions we know little about in most cases. I think it's basically the status quo. That means nematode pathogen interactions in the soil, these interactions with bacteria and root fungi, weak pathogenic fungi are very important. And it's the status quo in the rhizosphere because in every root system, you have these pathogens and nematodes interacting. The nematode weakening the root system, the pathogens moving in afterwards through the, through the lesions that the nematodes cause, the feeding sites. So you get this browning of the root system on the right when root knot is together with pythium. You get the browning of the root when you have a, a lesion nematode with pythium or with fusarium or with rhizoctonia. 
So you have these interactions. In the middle, you see uh, yam in Africa, severe problem for the Africans. And it's a, it's a survival uh, crop in Africa. In the drought season, these, these things survive the drought season and can be eaten later. The nematodes can also break resistance. For example, in tomato, we have resistance to root knot nematodes in tomato based on one gene. And if the nematode is present ahead of time, the, the gene does not work. That means you have a breakdown in the resistance. So these interactions, which are the status quo in the rhizosphere, are very important in our, basically in our management systems, our root health management systems. I mentioned the beneficial nematodes, the good. And there are many in the soil. On the left, you see a insect larvae that's been killed by a small nematode that, that, that kills insects. It, it basically kills the larvae of a larger number of Lepidoptera insects, and it can affect other insect uh, genera. But it's a, a, a very famous nematode. It's being produced in large numbers in fermenters and sold around the world. On the far right, you see a nematode that was made basic, I would say, famous by Jaraf. Jaraj Puri in, in Aligarh, who I knew very well, or I know very well, and this nematode feeds on other nematodes. It just sucks in, that's a, that's a, a, a Leutogyna gall, galling nematode larvae being eaten by this particular nematode. Am I talking too fast? Absolutely not. I can understand every single word of what you're saying, doctor. You're going okay, my, good. My wife just walked up and told me to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle, you see a large number of what we call free-living nematodes, also parasites. You can see the tooth on the one on the bottom. These nematodes are very active in the soil. The half the nematodes in the soil are free-living, non-pathogenic nematodes, parasitic nematodes. And they have an important influence on organic matter decomposition. They move bacteria back and forth through the organic matter. They help in the decomposition. They help in the mineralization of the soil in that respect. They move bacteria. The insect control I just mentioned, uh, they spread the microbial diversity, which is important in the soil to have it spread homogeneous as possible. They incite the complex diseases, as I mentioned, and they have many activities we still don't know. We don't really know what they all do. Now, we talk about these beneficials. Now, the beneficials are not just nematodes, they're fungi and bacteria. And this is what I call the antagonistic potential. It's the driving force behind suppressiveness. In every soil around every root system, you have a certain degree of suppressiveness. It's usually not high enough to give good yield, but in every piece of soil, in every 100 grams of soil, you have a large number of microorganisms that we, I put in the topic, the antagonistic potential. And this antagonistic potential is manipulating. You can manipulate it. You can increase microbes in the soil with organic matter. And this is very important for natural control. It's not, it's not enough normally to control nematodes and have high yields, but it's part of the ecosystem. It's part of the root health promoting system. So the antagonistic potential is important. It can be measured in some cases for certain nematodes. Now the beneficial microbes can be, are very different. We have, for example, in the bottom left, mycorrhizal fungi that increase phosphate uptake, but also reduce root knot nematode development. We have endophytic bacteria and rhizosphere bacteria that can repel nematodes. They actually induce resistance. We have the trapping fungi on the far right that are found throughout the soil that will actually just trap a plant parasitic nematode. And then they feed on it and it goes very quickly. Then you have very important uh, fungi, the egg pathogens. The egg pathogens are important because they're found in the soil. They can be added to the soil, like BioAct, for example, a buyer product, I believe. And they attack the eggs of root knots and other nematodes. And this is a very important uh, component of that antagonistic potential or well, suppressiveness in the soil. We also have nematodes that move around and, and spread rhizobium in the middle. So we have these interactions, but also some plant parasitic nematodes will reduce rhizobium. And then we have a nematode, a bacteria here on the top left. It's called Posteria penetrans. It attaches to root knot nematodes, but also to cyst nematodes. It's a Posteria species, Ishavawi. And those little spores penetrate into the nematode and the nematode keeps on developing and it produces thousands and thousands of additional spores. The nematode causes very little damage and it produces more spores for suppressiveness. So very interesting microbial nematode interactions in the soil.
So I got to slow down a little bit. Let me take a, a sip of cough. Tough. So I still have time. The time is all yours, doctor. All mine. Well, that's good. Unless, unless you're checking on me as to whether or not I'm listening to your presentation. I'm watching doing both. I do both. Oh, you're doing both, is it? Yes, I do. That's a good, a good teacher has to make sure his students stay awake. Absolutely. We are all awake. We are all listening. In <laughs> fact, I'm getting a lot of comments as well. So <laughs> now in one of my last books, and I'll show a picture of it later, we listed the different tools that are available for integrated nematode management. And these are the tools, and this, these are estimates of what you can achieve if you use these tools in a management system. And I, I'm not going to go through them all, but you'll notice in the middle, biocontrol and bioenhancement. These are two types of biocontrol systems can cause up to 60% reduction in nematodes. You still have 40% there that you have to control if you want perfect yield, or very high yield. We have trap cropping, we have alley cropping, we have biofumigations, resistant varieties, et cetera. Resistant cultivars are probably the best. You have 90% control with a resistant cultivar. You have 100% control if you have a good quarantine system. If you don't let the nematode in, you don't have a problem. We have antagonistic crops. Organic amendments are important because they increase that antagonistic potential in the soil. And nematocytes. Now, in this particular graph, I show nematocytes as having almost no effect it's not true. If I add, if I change the title to this thing, to the, if I change the title to the, the importance of nematocytes in the pathozone on early root infection, that small bar would go all the way up to 90%. So this is important. Now, then why do we need integrated pest management alternatives, in, integrated nematode management alternatives? This is a question I ask my students and ask myself for many years. Rotations are now impractical in many areas. In most places in the United States, for example, they plant maize, 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 or soybean, 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 soybean. In India, you have rice, wheat, rice, wheat, rice, wheat, and in, and in some countries you have re rice three times a year. The physical methods limit are limited and unrealistic. We can't flood the world to increase yields. Um, resistance is scarce, almost non-existent in many of the crops that Dr. Khan showed. The lack of new nematicides, and I put a dash until now, have limited their use. Good nematicides, safe nematicides, highly biodegradable nematicides has limited their use recently, but this is now changing. And that's what one of the talks is after mine. GMOs are still not in existence for nematode pests, and biologicals alone do not give adequate control. They're part of the system. We have to think of systems and not just of one technique. In 2008, I gave a in presentation to a group of industry people in the United States. I had about 40 people from the company around the table, and I told them pesticide use in agriculture is a thing of the past. And it's upset them, as you can imagine. This was at a time when biocontrol was still not moving on the market. And you see here deep introduction of pesticide fumigants in the soil in Florida, for example. They put pesticides almost one meter deep. You see the complete covering with plastic of fumigation. Most of this is no longer possible. But I presented this, and at that time I believed it. But however, technology is something that can adapt to changing world. And companies like Bayer and Syngenta and DuPont, whatever you want to call it, the other company, I don't know all of them, they have an ability to, to adapt technology to change, to a changing world. And as you started to lose nematicides, they made, they checked, they looked for different types of nematicides. And what they're doing now, and the technologies are very important, is we're taking these tools, biologicals, chemicals, uh, beneficials, and we're putting them not in the bulk soil in a whole field. They were talking here about, I, I can't see it on my screen because this thing is in the way here. Can you move that thing? No, yeah. We have 50,000, 5,000 tons of soil in a hectare, 50 centimeters deep. That's very difficult to, to treat, to control all the nematodes. It's expensive. It's actually dangerous. But if you put those chemicals or the biologicals directly on the host and the end on the right side, we're talking about 1,800 to 25,000 seeds or seedlings per hectare, maybe more, probably more seed. So there you have a direct 
targeted, precise way of controlling a nematode by putting your IPM or integrated nematode tool right on the host. And this is precision agriculture at its utmost. It's, it's really a fantastic move by industry to be able to do this. So improved strategies for root health application are in now in existence. Whoop. That's not, not the one I want. So where am I at here? So I'm stuck. My presentation is not moving forward. Now, there it is. So seed treatment with rhizosphere bacteria and endophytic bacteria and fungi is a thing of the present. It's one of the new technologies that is now on the market around the world. But again, they don't work alone. Alone, they do not usually give significant levels of control. They have to be combined with other techniques. So precision application of the matticides and biocontrol agents is I think a, 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 is the, the, the future of protecting the young plant in that pathosome. Our goal has to be root health in the pathosome and not soil health. We don't want to, the soils don't get sick, plants get sick. So we have to be able to control those nematodes in the pathosome and develop a healthy root in the first five or six weeks after planting for most nematodes. In banana, for example, you have to do this treat three or four times a year because the, the roots are always there. So this is the future, seed treatment, seedling treatment, drip irrigation, uh, in-road treatment with nematicides and biocontrol agent uh, worldwide. So this is my take home message to everybody. So with that, I'd like to stop bothering you people and flooding you with a, a very quick presentation. I, I wanna move this thing out of my way. I always tell myself, have you ever stopped to think and forgot to start again? And sometimes we think so much that we, we, we stop thinking and we don't start again. And if that happens, what I can only recommend if you're going to work with nematodes, as, and this is a, something I have to, I have to do. You, you take a look at one of my books, <laughs> Plant Parasitic Nematodes in the Subtropical and Tropical Agriculture lists all the major nematodes on major crops around the world. And there's a number of chapters in here written by Indian uh, colleagues of mine. And if that's not enough for you, then you take the next book, Integrated Nematode Management, a state of the art, uh, Hari uh, uh, Gar and uh, uh, here Ramon Ra Walia also are contributors to this book. It's a, it's a book that talks only about the tools of managing nematodes around the world. It will be an open access book in five weeks. So everyone will have access to it free of charge. And I think it would be interesting for anyone who wants to understand what's happening in the field. What are the farmers doing? What are the farmers not doing? And what we have to do in the future. And with that, I want to thank you all for listening. And I'm sorry if I talk too long. Thank absolutely you very much. Not, doctor. Absolutely not. You'll have to stop uh, sharing your screen so that uh, the rest of the world can also see me along with you. You're awake. That's good. Wait a minute. How do I? I have been sharing. awake right through. I've been listening <laughs> to the entire presentation and I must I say hope so. a fabulous <laughs> job. No, honestly, we are getting, we are getting uh, a lot of comments in the chat box everywhere else. People are thoroughly enjoying the, the whole webinar, not just your session, all the other sessions that have happened. Now, a quick question. How does one uh, get hold of your book that you showed us at the end? The one on the right will be open access uh, in the second week of November. It's on nematode management. This is the book that basically uh, everyone can don download and you can see uh, a chapter by Raman. You can see a chapter by Hari Gar, uh, chapters by Chinese. Uh, people around the world have, have, have contributed to that book and it's free. And oh, it'll fantastic. be open access. It's free. Fantastic. Everybody can pull it down. Every student, everybody, every farmer. I think that, you're doing a yeoman service. You're doing a yeoman service by providing that book for free because I'm sure everybody who's attending this webinar as well as the thousands of others who are joining us on Facebook and who are sharing this particular webinar would love to read that book. So I would like to give you all the Dr. Sahib has written a book in which the rest of the experts, the scientists, the scientists and the professionals have contributed. That book will be available online. It's completely free. Uh, mostly, I think, by, but November is when you said it will release, right? It'll be released as an open access in November, and then it will come out as a hardback with that red cover uh, two weeks later. It's Fantastic. 450 pages, 280 colored pictures uh, by 60, by 78 authors. Nice. 
and i'm sure that uh, bear will uh, take the initiative of providing that link to everybody so that all of them can download and read that thank you so much doctor you have been absolutely incredible <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you very much well i'm pretty sure that you are enjoying this webinar uh, keep those questions coming in in fact if you can see the chat box uh, sharif ne likha thank you dr richard for the great information it was a great opportunity to learn something new from a great legend like you uh, amanullah kehte hain very good informative presentation thank you very much arun mishra kehte hain fantastic presentation dr richard these are all comments coming in for you dr richard thank you dr richard for the great information it was a great opportunity to learn something new very okay. very nice sir so great people are clearly enjoying and uh, i will very quickly also switch over to facebook and take a look at the comments there also we are getting like thousands of comments elated after knowing about your book thanks for your excellent presentation this according to chirashree gangopadhyay i am also interested in contributing significant chapter in nematology with you sir if you are planning for the edited book please let me know says mohammad irshad there are hundreds and thousands of comments doctor if you want to just go through the facebook page yourself please do I'm that i'm afraid i'm afraid to look at the comments cuz it'll give me a heart attack if i see thousands of questions <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes that is there or maybe it will give you some extra chapters in your book you never know well maybe we should write one together <laughs> fantastic thank you very much You're next welcome. up ladies and gentlemen it's my absolute pleasure to invite our next speaker for the afternoon for the evening he will give us a session on nematode management practices he is none other than dr r k walia dr raman kumar walia walia sahab agar aap apna audio switch on kare So I would love to have you in the spotlight, Dr. Raman Kumar Walia is former project coordinator, ICAR, AICRP on nematodes. He is a doctorate in nematology from Indian Agricultural Research Institute. Served at CCS Haryana Agricultural University from 1980 to 2015, and also has been the project lead at ICAR All India Coordinated Research.